All right, guys, welcome to another KevCam Night class tonight. Um, tonight, we have Brendan McKinnon helping us out again tonight. How's it going, Brendan? Doing well. Doing well. How are you doing, man? Can't complain one bit. We're finally getting some sunshine in Minnesota and getting rid of that ice on the lake, so um, they're heading the right direction. <laughs> tell, me, tell me about it. I just looked at the weather forecast up here in New England, and it's going to be, uh, they're talking like mid-70s all weekend long, so. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm got the cabin fever thing going on. Yeah, they. Uh, <laughs> for those of you guys that are down south, I don't know if you guys seen that. I think it's a grill commercial where he, uh, or a burger commercial where he comes out of his house and he's still wearing his big old bundled up uh, coat and stuff. And <laughs> what happened, guys? <laughs> but, yeah, that's pretty much Kevin and I. We're yeah. uh, we're in the great great northwest northeast. So. Yeah. <sighs> So, all right, guys, so for those of you guys that are new, um, welcome to the night class tonight. Um, tonight we will be covering constant Z combined with uh, 3D constant step over, and then also we'll do constant Z combined with 3D corner offset. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a refresher just because we've kind of covered the constant Z, we've covered the 3D constant step over and the 3D corner offset. But now we're going to combine those um, all into one operation, so you guys don't have to have multiple operations for that. Um, but uh, for the guys that are new, uh, we use GoToWebinar. Um, currently, everybody is on mute just to eliminate any background noise. Um, if you guys do have questions, and I definitely uh, sh ask as many as you can, um, there is a questions panel for you guys. Definitely ask questions in there. Um, and ask as many as you want. Um, and like I said, these classes are solely designed for you guys to to get everything out of. So um, test me as much as you can, and uh, even Brendan, and he'll uh, he'll type back uh, the answer if we if we can't figure it out. Um, we'll we'll cover it right right then and there, and uh, get your questions answered right away. So. Um, yeah, good. You know, good point, Kevin. I was just going to say, you know, I'll I'll definitely be monitoring the uh, the questions area. So. Um, you know, again, just just as normal. You know, type your question in. We'll uh, we'll address it as it comes up. And if we don't get to it right away, we'll we'll certainly get to it uh, during the Q and A at the end of the presentation. So no no problem there. Absolutely, guys. And like I said, these classes are solely you know for you guys. So um, any ideas, email those over to me. Um, for those of you guys that don't have my email, I will let me copy it into the chat for you guys. So you guys should all see my email address on there. And then um, for those of you guys that are new, every one of these night classes is recorded for you guys. Um, so I did create a YouTube channel, and let me put the link in there for that. Um, all the classes are recorded, and I should have that pulled up yeah, right here. So it's going to bring you to the Solid Cam University channel. Um, you'll see my ugly mug on there, and then you guys can click on videos. and. We're adding videos in here constantly, so it's just not the night classes that we're adding in here. Um, tonight or uh, today, Mark added some uh, cutting condition videos on how the cutting conditions work. Uh, There's a lot of questions about that, so we created a video for that. And using the solid verify part analysis on um, how to, you know, make sure you've machined your part down to size, make sure you're not gouging and whatnot. So. Definitely come here, uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button too, and that's just so you guys can get updates on when there's a new video created for you guys. So, um, And then, like I said, if you guys do have ideas, send those over to me. Um, now, hey, let me get this screen pulled over for you guys. You guys will get a free hat and t-shirt. I apologize, I have somewhere lost email that I sent off to headquarters on who needs a hat and t-shirt. So if you guys could shoot me an email and say, hey, I was signed up for a hat and t-shirt, send that over to me. Um, apologize, I don't, I cannot find the email to save my life on my list of that was uh, supposed to get their hat and t-shirts. So um, if you guys could, I think, Ronnie, you were supposed to get one, but I can't remember offhand. But, um, you know, if you guys could just shoot me an email and let me know on that. But uh, if you guys do have an idea, we'll send you some solid cam swag and uh, get you guys up some cool, uh, and they're nice hats too. Um, they're not just cheap, crappy hats. Um, so I got, an, I got an idea, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Can um, can I get a hat and a T-shirt, given the fact that I work for the company, or no? Because you don't give me any good ideas for the night classes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just okay. I I get it now. <laughs> I understand. All right, guys. 
So, and then like, uh, like you guys notice here, we like to get this as laid back as possible, uh, you know, and get uh, as much learning out of this as possible. So definitely uh, ask those questions, uh, throw anything out there um, that you guys want. So, okay, we'll get the ball rolling here. Um, so tonight, like I said, we're doing the combined uh, with 3D constant step over and 3D corner offset. So what I've done is I've got two molds, uh, well actually not two molds, I got one mold here. Um, this one is the core and we'll actually be doing the cavity um, right after this. So it's kind of nice to you, you guys will get to see both halves of the mold. Uh, you know, usually we just work on the one side, but um, for your tonight we'll kind of give you a good, um, you know, detailed explanation of how the 3D corner offset works with combined constant Z with the uh, 3D constant step over, so. Okay, so yeah, it comes up. Okay, Ronnie, shoot me an email on that, please. Just because I, I don't Yeah, you know, these. I was just, yeah, I was just gonna say, Kevin, I'm just replying to Ronnie right now. Perfect. So just, I'm gonna have um, him email you and we'll get that off to you right away, Ronnie. Yep. And we certainly apologize for the Absolutely. delay. Absolutely. Okay, so we'll get going here. Um, Grab your 3D HSM, and we are going to do the combined constant Z with 3D corner offset, just for this part right here. Um, same as usual, grab your tool, and for this one, I'm going to grab, I'm just kind of going through here, see what I have. I'm just grab that half inch ball mill. Um, now, constraint boundaries. Where do you where do you want to contain that area to? And I I, I know this is a little bit of a refresher uh, for some of you guys here, but um, where do we want to contain it to? So I'm going to do a manual boundary, and you'll see it already kind of populated for me here. Um, it's going to go all the way around the part for us, and I want to keep that centered so that tool kind of stays centered to that boundary. If you guys are kind of curious about the boundary, you guys can kind of click on here and, and watch the picker pictures uh, update along with it here. But we'll just go back to centered here. And our constant Z passes. So I'm going to do a point, uh, 25 thousand step down here. Um, this is basically how much we're stepping down each pass. And this is, like I said, this is a little bit of repeat. Um, this constant Z is going to look the exact same if you were to pick constant Z up here. Uh, the only thing added is our pencil passes and our corner offset here. Um, so what I'm going to do with my constant Z is, since we're combining the constant Z with the 3D corner offset, is I'm going to tell the constant Z just to work on the angles of between 40 and 90 degrees. So more vertical walls with that constant Z. And that's just more or less just for finish. Um, now when I get to the flat areas, then I'm going to use my um, 3D corner offset to pick up that tool path. So on my link right here, um, I'm going to go bi-directional. Now my pencil passes, um, kind of just what it says here is we're just kind of uh, adding in the pencil passes along with the 3D corner offset. So I'm going to leave these all the same. And like I said before, this is the exact same thing as what you guys are going to see if you guys come over here and pick up pencil milling. And then the corner offset. Um, what is your step over that you want to achieve using that corner offset? So we'll just say, uh, 20 thou again. Um, I am now going to clean up everything from flat up to 43 degrees. And these numbers are automatically populated for me since I switched this over to a 40 and 90 over here um, that these will automatically overlap. And you'll see we're actually doing a three degree overlap um, and just to get for blending and whatnot there. So everything kind of pans out that way. Now for my 3D corner offset, I also have the option to do one way or bi-directional. Now for those of you guys that aren't sure um, with the constant Z and the corner offset, constant Z is just basically on those more vertical walls is just doing a constant, kind of what it says, it's, it's constantly moving down in Z the 25 thou that we told it. Now with the corner offset, Corner offset is a really nice tool path, and basically what it does is it follows the contour of the geometry. So it's like a 3D constant step over following 
the the path of the of the geometry here over the face. Um, you could also think of it as the parallel pencil milling passes. So it kind of follows along that geometry, but we're expanding that out. Um, so with the corner offset, it's smart enough to know, you know, with if we were picking the uh, parallel pencil milling, when we did that night class, you had to you specified how many passes you wanted to take in the you know the horizontal direction and in the vertical direction. We're now with that 3D corner offset is doing it all the way out to the outside edge and it's kind of calculating everything for you. So real real nice smart technology there. Um, and okay, I got bidirectional. Let's do a save and calculate real quick. And now what it's going through, and you can kind of see what's going on here, calculating the pencil milling passes, calculating the 3D constant step over passes, um, the constant step over passes, getting everything processed here. Yeah, so Kevin, as you're as you're moving through this, um, is there any you know maybe some recommendations that you can make in terms of um, you know processing speed and you know that kind of stuff? Um, maybe talk a little bit about what you're using for for a computer and you know maybe if somebody's seeing some delays or something like that in processing, is there some you know recommendations that you can make? Yeah, absolutely, guys. Um, with you guys will notice it's going to take a little bit longer when you're running uh, HSM. Uh, just because we're laying a blanket of toolpath over the entire part here. So there's a lot of stuff being calculated, especially when we're combining constant Z pencil milling passes and corner offset passes here. Um, you know, we use multi-core processing. So the more cores you have, you know, the better off you'll be. Uh, same thing with the RAM, I guess, kind of goes hand in hand. More RAM you have, the, the faster you will be, or, or memory, I guess you would say. Um, now, with SOLIDWORKS, they only use one core for, for the processing. Um, and that's the nice thing in SOLIDCAM, we use the multi-core threading. So, um, you know, if you guys have questions, I know, uh, George, you pinged me on uh, recommended computers. If you guys um, need that, please email me and let me know, and uh, I will get you off that sheet. And it's a sheet that our head IT department kind of came up with um, that they've done a lot of testing on each computer, and they kind of updated each month with all the latest and greatest stuff out there. So any of you guys that want that, definitely uh, let me know and I can send that uh, link over to you guys here. So, okay. So we got our tool path here. Um, you'll notice if we get kind of the top right here, we're doing our uh, corner offset on the flat areas, kind of following the contour of the geometry. And then when we go to the vertical walls, or basically 40 degrees to 90 degrees, we're doing our uh, constant Z step down. Um, so we're getting real nice tool path, nice blending going on. Um, let's just go ahead and play this through in Solid Verify real quick. Now, I have my tolerance set up, um, with, uh, which is default at 4 thou for my simulation. Um, that night, there, that uh, video that Mark just created today um, kind of talks about the tolerancing of your accuracy here. Um, it's just the accuracy of this model right here. So I have a setup as fourth thou facet tolerance. Um, and give you a little explanation of what the facet tolerance is, is this STL model here is broken up into little triangles and how tight together those triangles are. Um, the tighter I make that accuracy, the more your model is going to look on the machine. Um, but on the, the flip side of things is it takes a little bit longer to uh, simulate through just because it's so, so accurate. And you'll kind of see as we're kind of going through this part, it's switching back and forth between our uh, 3D constant step over and our constant Z. Um, kind of did some of the constant Z passes first, and now we're kind of coming back and doing that uh, 3D constant step over. But you can kind of see as the tool path is coming up to the surface or up to that uh, that heel cup right there, it's following along the curvature. So you guys will get a real nice finish on this. Um, and same thing for this side, as it comes over, it's basically doing that loop or that U-shape pattern right there for you guys. And coming up to the surface and blending. Now you'll see that we still have a little bit of material um, from left over from when we roughed it out. Um, basically my ball end mill is too large to fit in there. 
to get that material out of there. So what we'll do is, I know we're not covering um, rest material tonight, but I want to finish part for you guys to see. So we'll just throw some uh, uh, rest machining on there and with a smaller tool to come clean up those spots. Okay, so you'll see, got a finished product here. And like, like I said, it's not going to, I have a four thou facet tolerance right now. Um, so it's fourth out accurate, but as I zoom in here, you'll kind of see I'm getting a little bit, uh, a little bit of nubs kind of sticking out. If I switch that over to five tenths tolerance or even smaller, this will actually look like glass. Um, so pretty nice finish in there. So, um, but what I'm gonna do now is I hate seeing those little white chunks in there. Um, and if I go to here and run my talk my stock target verification you can see I still have dark blue kind of around all these areas right here that I still have material on so what we'll do here is uh, we'll exit out of here and we'll do our HSM rest and I know we kind of covered rest in a different night class here but uh, we're just kind of do it as a uh, refresher here just so we can have a finished part here okay so we have our combined there and let's just go ahead and do a, another 3D HSM. And we will switch this over to rest machining. Grab our cutter here. And we were using tool number two, which is a half inch. That's straight end mill. Yeah, a little eighth inch. Um, let me just see what size radius I got in here. Yep, that'll be perfect. Constraint boundaries. Um, we can leave it on uh, automatic or manual, it uh, doesn't matter. Uh, since I already created that HSM operation using a manual boundary, it's still pulling up that uh, those parameters for me. So I'm just gonna leave that reference tool. Um, that tool was a half inch ball end mill that we used before, so I'll just put a half inch in there. And passes, um, we'll just do the same step over and step down save and calculate and this is basically just looking through the entire model um, and seeing if there's any leftover material and this rest machining will come and clean it up for you guys so like I was saying before um, you know all those areas that were showing blue now that eighth inch ball end mill is coming and cleaning up all these areas for you guys so real nice technology there um, and like I said I'm and I've said this in the past, a um, lot of the default values that are in HSM for you guys are good. Um, so you'll notice when I did this operation here, all I did is pick a tool, um, reference tool, and change my step down to 20,000 to kind of match what was already done there, and that's it. Now I do have the option to come in here and change my linking. Um, you know, I can stay on my surface with, you know, 0.375. A lot of this stuff is already set fairly well. Um, like I said in, in the past uh, HSM videos, that uh, you know these are good. But if you guys want to fine tweak them, definitely come in here and uh, add. You know, if you guys got to have more of a ramp angle in there, um, definitely you can modify all these. <clears throat> Yeah, you know, Kevin, I was just going to say, I mean, when you look at the efficiency of that toolpath, I mean, that's really incredible. You know, there's no, I mean, there's absolutely no wasted moves in there at all. It's, no. It's, and that's by, by default, too, yep. which is pretty cool to think about. Yeah, and when you guys are doing the combine, um, you are going to have a little bit of retracts in there. And that's just because we're trying to blend basically two different, well, three different toolpaths all into one for you guys. So, I mean, you'll see that we have a couple little green hangers out there, but, you know, very minimal. Um, and, you know, if you guys have a ton of them um, on there, what you guys can do to clean that up is in your HSM, it's going to be set to climb mill uh, or one way. Switch that over to bidirectional, since we're using a ball end mill, really doesn't matter. And then that's going to clean up a lot of your repositions also. So uh, one one little trick there. It all depends on, you know, what you guys are looking for finish also. But uh, if you guys have the option to use the bidirectional, definitely switch everything to uh, bidirectional, and it's going to clean up uh, that toolpath for you guys. So. <laughs> it You know, Kevin, I, I'm sorry. I just have to laugh because, 
you know, when you say clean up the toolpath, I mean, you know, <laughs> this is nothing compared to some of the other stuff you see out there. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it, it's it's so funny when you say, oh, you know, yeah, we can make it a little better. It's like, you know, it's so efficient at this point, but, but we do allow you to actually you know, get more efficient as well, but. Yeah, so um, you get to see all that cool stuff because you get all the new customers saying, hey, look at what my cam system does and this is what it looks like right now and it's like well, a rat's nest in there. I know, I know, and it's, it, and that's the whole thing. It, it just, it's so funny because, you know, we, we talk to people like that every single day and they're like, oh yeah, well, so this is what I'm doing now and we're like, oh, all right, no, 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 hold on. <laughs> you know, it's like, let me show you something here. But uh, no, that's cool. Thanks for thanks for showing that. Absolutely. So, any questions on the three D constant step over? Um, it might be a little bit shorter tonight, thanks. I just have the two parts, just because it's so much review here. But um, any questions on how the three uh, D constant step over works? Or I'm sorry, the three uh, D corner offset. No, it looks like um, All right. everything. Yeah, everything has come in here, Kevin, so far. Perfect. We'll uh, go on to our cavity here. I think what we should do in these short nights, Kevin, we should we should probably send out you know like drink tickets or you know vouchers for you yeah. know like a <laughs> like a free you know free beer at your local uh, watering hole or something you know. There you go. <laughs> All right. uh, we do have another question here. Oh, actually, it was from George. Uh, George was talking a little bit, a little bit more about the, you know, technical stuff in terms of his setup, uh, computer setup. So, but yeah, we can okay. we can address that as we go on. So sure. no problem. Okay, so now we are going to do the three D constant step over. Um, so you'll see right here, I just roughed it out using three D I machining, and basically, I just need to come back and finish everything up now. Um, so what we'll do is come in here and we'll do our 3D constant step over. Now this is very similar to what we were just using except it's not going to follow the geometry. Um, so you know where it was doing that U-shaped pattern right here, um, basically it's going to come down to as you know it's just going to be constantly moving over in the specified step over that we tell it to. Um, it's not going to follow any limits. The only thing it's going to be following is the drive boundary um, of that geometry. So what I'll do is I'll throw a dry boundary around the outside edge here, and we'll kind of get a, a loop. I kind of get this out of the way here for you guys. We'll get a uh, a, a loop, so kind of coming around and just slowly working its way to the center. Um, but now when we get to those more, more vertical walls, it's automatically going to switch over to the constant Z passes for us, because I'm going to kind of do the same thing as what we did before is I want to keep those constant Z passes for that vertical wall and the 3D constant step over for the flat, flatter areas, I guess you say, or zero to 43 degrees is what I'll actually pick here. So, okay, so we can always skip that geometry one, um, unless, I guess I didn't cover this one in, this one in the other one, but unless if you guys wanted to pick a new target model. Uh, the only time you'd wanna do that is if your target model over here on the left-hand side is, let's say, um, you know, one thou, but you guys want to have extremely accurate. So what you guys can actually do is pick a second target model or a third target model and have a even tighter facet tolerance set on just that particular operation. So pretty nice to have in there. Um, so if we go to our tool and I am going to grab just a little three eighths or a, 375 ball end mill here. Now my drive, um, I'm gonna switch this over to manual and use, oh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna use here, let me hit the little box right here. And don't want that one, there's the one I'm looking for. So I'm just grabbing the outside boundary. Now, like I said before, when we did uh, the 3D constant step overs, this is gonna provide your shape of your tool path. So it's like I said, we're going to kind of start on and going to run that the, the flow of that part. And that's why in the 3D corner offset, we actually don't have a drive. Uh, we just have the constraint. Um, so, th And that's just because with the 3D constant step over, it's following the geometry, like I said before, 
where the 3D constant step over is you're kind of defining how you want that tool path to kind of look. So now we can grab that same geometry for the uh, containment and we'll set this one to center too here. Now our constant Z passes here. Um, let's just do a 30 thou step down here. And again, we will just go from 40 to 90 degrees. Um, now, we're not going for a super fine finish here, and you know, I definitely don't want to tell you guys, you know, always use a 30 thou step down. That's not the case at all here. Um, you know, if you guys are looking for a mere finish, anything 10 thou or smaller is going to give you a very nice finish, depending on you know uh, the toolpath you're using here, but. Um, I don't want it to uh, sit and simulate forever for you guys, so I'm just going to leave it at 30 thou right here. Um, now, for this one, I'm actually going to turn off my fit arcs. Uh, basically, what's going on here is you, you can see in the picture that it kind of smooths everything out. Well, if I turn it off, it's going to follow the geometry exactly how it is, uh, using kind of almost like line segments, little jagged. Um, all depends on the part and how everything looks here. Uh, maybe we'll just kind of do a before and after of what the, the fit arcs will do. Sometimes you guys can see it in there, sometimes you can't. Um, so we'll do that. And then one other thing here is with my uh, constant Z passes, since I'm doing a 30 thou step down, um, it might get down to a floor and it'll leave you know, that 30 thou little lip. Uh, I know we kind of talked about this in the past. Uh, you get that little lip around like outside edges. Um, where the 30 thou kind of it stops basically so we're kind of stepping down 30 thou and then we have too big of a gap here so what I'm gonna do is uh, come to my adaptive step down here and automatically insert extra passes in there to cover uh, that step down so we have a nice smooth finish there now like I was talking about before my link I'm gonna use bi-directional because um, we can go either way with that ball end mill and then our 3d constant step over Pretty much the exact same thing as what you guys are going to see in 3D constant step over if you're just to pick it by itself here. Um, so we'll just do a, a 30 thou again, uh, vertical and horizontal. And I am going to be doing this between 0 and 43 degrees, so more of the flat areas. Um, we'll turn off the fit arcs here, and we'll turn on our bidirectional, and let's do save and calculate here. Okay, well, as long as this is calculating, Brendan, do we have a uh, question on computer you were saying? or? Well, no, actually, you know, it, it's really kind of interesting. Y you brought up something previously that I just kind of wanted to touch on, and um, one of the things that, you know, that we do, that we actually do for free is, is like Kevin mentioned, the, the multi-core processing. Um, that is, that's a standard feature in SolidCam. And a lot of other packages out there, you know, they actually charge you more to be able to be more efficient, if you will, um, by taking advantage of unused cores on your network. And SolidCam does that automatically. So, you know, just, just something you might want to keep in mind, um, it, particularly if you're using a network license, um, any unused cores, SolidCam is automatically going to go and take advantage of. So, yeah. you know, that's a really good point. Um, you know, yeah, and I, God, it's so funny. I, I have so many customers that ask me about that. And there are so many competitive systems out there, Kevin, that charge huge, huge money to just to take advantage of that, that one particular feature. Sure. So, yeah. yeah. If you guys do have, are on the network and you guys have a supercomputer, um, you know, it computes on you know just unbelievably fast what you guys can do is save and calculate in parallel and actually uh, guide that out to the network computer for you guys and uh, your computing will be you know next to no time at all so you know this part took I don't know four or five seconds to calculate where it'd be instantaneously done and have toolpath on there so it's pretty nice 
Well, you know, and again, it's so funny because when you look at that and, and you, you, it's like, well, it took, you know, four or five seconds. I mean, this is the world we live in today, right? <laughs> it's it's like if, if it's not instantaneous, then it's like, oh, it's too slow. Well, yep. <laughs> you know, again, look, look at what you're getting, you know, out, out of, you know, out of this processing. So it's really, you know, it's interesting to look at that. But um, it's almost like your microwave, you know what I mean? If, if you're you know, if your chicken sandwich isn't heated up in less than 30 seconds, it's like, you know, you get irritated. So yep. it's like, but think about the, the accuracy of what you're getting out of something like this. And in, you know, like you said, about five or seven seconds. Yeah. It's incredible. Absolutely. Now with this one, um, we did, did start off with a very large block here. And what's happened here is it's calculating the updated stock for the previous operation. So this 3DI machining, it's updating the stock right now. And since I exit out of this part and uh, I kind of stripped it clean, and I can show you guys how to do that. Uh, I kind of got brought up during this week, uh, I think Monday or Tuesday, a customer had that question um, on file sizes. You guys can actually go into your guys' CAM file. And like I said, once this is done calculating here, I'll kind of show you how to do that. Um, and you can strip all unused geometry, tools, um, stock, everything for you guys. Now, unfortunately, I must have cleaned up this cam part uh, prior to opening it here, so it's, it does take a little bit of time to update all my stuff here. But um, it's real nice because it, you'll, you'll notice a huge file size difference. Um, so if you guys are a little bit tight on you know, uh, storage, definitely click your cleanup cam parts when you're done and that's going to kind of remove all the unused stuff that isn't needed in there so yeah you know but but again kevin i i just have to stress this you know i mean that took what that take 15 seconds maybe 20 seconds too long. you no. know that <laughs> <laughs> well too long for you of yeah. course but you know i mean kevin's a perfectionist and we know this but um no but again i mean it does seem like it might take a little bit of time, but in, in the real world, I mean, programming a part like that is, you know, that's pretty complex. And, you know, again, I, I'm not saying that it couldn't be faster, but, and I love the, you know, what Kevin's talking about, about, you know, having, having the, um, you know, cleaning up the cam part, and that's perfect. But, you know, again, you have to realize that uh, there is just an absolute ton of information that's going on uh, in the background there. So um, again, that's why I wanted to lead it back to the multi-core processing, which, uh, you know, again, just please understand if you're on a network license, you can take advantage of all of that and you you could really drastically reduce that time. Well, let me clarify. It doesn't, you guys can have a network license or a standalone license of SolidCam. It just has to be, that computer has to be networked to a faster computer to take advantage of that. Right, so it has to see, right, exactly, it has to see those cores. Yep. Is that yep. correct? Yep, yep. Okay. absolutely. So Perfect. Okay. okay, so we're all updated here um, from the 3DI rough here, and I will, let's go ahead and start playing this through here. And, you know, like I said before, um, doing those constant Z passes first, and then it's going to come back and do that 3D constant step over. Now, if you guys don't want to do it that way, if you guys want to, go more along the line of the 3D constant step over work, work on the flat areas first, we can definitely switch the order of that. Um, and I can show you this once it's done playing here. And uh, so you guys get the option to pick which you want to go first. And this, I mean... Well, that's another... But... Oh yeah, no. I was just going to say that's another cool feature too. I mean, the fact that you can, you know, kind of pick and choose what you oh, want to do first based over. Yeah, that's, you know, that doesn't really happen. Again, just based on, you know, all these other companies that are, you know, they're saying, well, you know, everything's automatic. We just have automatic toolpath. Well, you know, that's, uh, you know, that's debatable, and I'm <laughs> sure Kevin could, <laughs> could probably chime in on some of that, but. Yeah, there's, it's, it's a, pretty interesting. There's a reason race car drivers drive manuals and not automatic. Is that, is that a good Well, uh, you know, and actually, you know, and, and not to not to put George George on the spot here tonight, but, um, you know, he just made a comment here. Machinists are control freaks, and, and they certainly are. You know, and that's that's the greatest thing about SolidCam is, is the fact that we, 
you know, we kind of give you both of those options. You know, you can automate as much as you'd like, but we also give you full and complete control at the same time. So, Absolutely. you know, again, George, great, great comment there. And in, in fact, um, I might, I might kind of hijack that and, <laughs> and use it in my, in some of my presentations because, you know, it, it really is true. Um, you know, everybody wants complete control over their toolpath and, you know, that's really the name of the game. Yeah, and uh, that's funny you say that because if I, I should tell that to my wife, she'll totally agree with that too, George. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, that, that is pretty more closer to home than you might think, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so we were talking about the order uh, when we were playing that through it. Um, when you guys start opening up your combined constant Z with you know whatever toolpath it does open up a new tab here, which is the machining order. Um, so we can do our constant Z passes first, or we can do our 3D constant step over passes first. Totally up to you guys on what you guys want there. Um, now, before I forget here, I was talking about the cleanup cam part. Uh, to do this, all you guys have to do is just right click and come down to cleanup cam part. And this will give you the option to remove, you know, G code files, remove updated stock, everything. Um, you know, if I have a very large file that, you know, let's say I need to send to you guys or you guys need to send to me, basically I'll just come in here, hit select all and hit OK and it's going to take that file size down tremendously, just getting rid of, you know, any unused stuff that was actually there. So, real nice feature there. Um, so, we did have some uh, leftover stock in there just because we were using a, let's see what size tool we were using there. Um, a 375 ball end mill. Um, so I need to come back in there and clean up some of those areas that I wasn't able to get at. Uh, so like I said before, we can do our 3D HSM using our rest. And we'll grab, uh, yeah, it will work. And constraint boundaries, um, you know, I can leave that just the same. You know, reference tool, we're using a 375, oops, 0.375 here, and maybe I'll just do a little bit smaller step down, 15, yeah, let's do 15 thou right there, uh, save and calculate, and now it's basically going around and finding any material that was left over. Um, so I'll get this updated here. And uh, like I said, it's basically searching the entire part, finding out where we had leftover geometry that, that uh, the 375 cutter or the ball end mill couldn't get into. Um, now I'm getting a little bit more movement than I want, so I'm going to do bi-directional again here. I thought it would have cleaned up my, uh, my retracts over here, but Looks like it's not. Um, so now we're getting all that material left over there. If we do a simulate here, and play it through here, you kind of see that, you know, we have those left area, leftover areas were cleaned up. Um, I can come in here and use my stock target comparison. So basically for myself, on this particular part right here, anything that is orange, yellow, or green is going to be with intolerance for me. Um, if you guys can see this right here, I have it set up so orange is four tenths and green is four tenths plus or minus. Well, what's going on here is I have a accuracy of four thou. So anything, um, you know, if I crank that down, then you know, to pretty tight tolerances, then everything will show up as yellow right here. So since I have my tolerance open a little bit, uh, basically all I'm looking for is anything that's red or anything that's dark blue. Um, so I still have, you know, some here in the corner that is still a little bit leftover material. And that's because, we'll get out of here, is it's basically a square corner. Um, and we'll turn off that tool pass for you guys. And you'll see we have a square corner there. Um, now, let's just go ahead and finish off this part here. We'll just go ahead and do a, a profile here. And I did add a taper. Oops. 
Grab my geometry here. I've seen that one in here. There it is. And I'll grab that taper tool here. Levels set up right here. And technology that looks all good. Save and calculate. And we should pretty much have a finished uh, mold here. So it kind of cleaned up those. So we have nice square corners now. Uh, everything kind of cleaned up in there using that taper mill. Um, so like I said before, you know, we're kind of working through this HSM series. Um, you know, everything is kind of led up to the, the good stuff at the end. And this, that, and this is why kind of these last, these combined ones are my favorite just because I can utilize one tool path and get all my material out. So you'll see, um, you know, I only have four operations here and I've basically finished off an entire, um, you know, cat or uh, cavity right here. Um, so there should be, you know, very, there should be no sanding at all that has to come back in here. Um, you know, obviously if I want a smoother finish in here, I would want to come and change my step down to, um, you know, something smaller than my 30 thou that I put in there. But, um, you know, one tool path kind of covers everything. And, you know, this is, uh, let's see, we're talking 13.75 by six inches here. So, um, not not anything small, not anything you know huge here, but uh, you know, like I said, it's kind of why these last ones are my favorite, just because I can get everything done all in one operation. Um, now, if I wanted to, I could eliminate this rest machining operation here and just use a smaller ball end mill doing this here. But you know, I figure I'm better off using a larger ball mill, getting majority of the stuff out here, and then just doing some. Uh, small cleanup on just those small radii right there. So, Any yeah, questions? you know, and Kevin, oh, sorry, okay. Kevin. No, I was just going to say that's a, you know, that's a really good point. It, it really all also depends on the material. You know, if this is like a wren shape part or, you know, something like that, or, um, you know, plastic or something, you know, you don't, don't really have the need to do a lot of, you know, roughing and semi finishing and stuff like that. Absolutely. So, yeah. Um, in fact, I, I was just talking with a with a prospect today, and and he was talking about um, uh, some knee replacement parts, and he was really concerned about. Um, actually, I'm sorry. It was he was an existing customer, and he had 2D Pro, and he was thinking, well, you know, do I have to go to Three Axis Pro to do some of this finishing work? And you know, th this particular part is actually you know r sort of similar to what he was doing, and. So then, you know, we kind of walked him through the, you know, the process. I got him on the phone with Paul Johnson. And so we were sitting there, we were talking, and, you know, like, and guys, this is really relevant because, you know, if somebody calls us up and says, well, you know, hey, I, I need to do some surfacing work, well, you know, that's, that's all well and good. Um, but it's not the instant assumption where, hey, you have to go to, you know, from 2D Pro to 3-axis Pro, which is, you know, a relatively, you know, high investment. Uh, you know, we do have other pieces of software that we can kind of fit in and show you how to do this sort of stuff, which is, you know, is exactly what Kevin is showing you tonight. So, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're never going to oversell you on something. We're just going to make the best recommendation. And, you know, again, everything that Kevin is showing you here today is a perfect example of that. You know, everything is modular. So, you know, start where you need to be. And then if you need more functionality later, well, that's fine, too. You know, so just, you know, again, we're, we're not high pressure sales at all. Absolutely. And if you guys will see on this, uh, this cavity here, um, this is actually inserts for a heel cup. Um, for, for my understanding is if you get bone spurs on your heels. Um, so this is the cavity and the uh, core that yeah, we did. That's what I, I thought it looked familiar, Kevin. That's why <laughs> I was, I was kind of making that point. Yep. <laughs> Yep. So, and now you guys get to see, you know, both sides are being done. Two different style tool paths there. Um, you know, if we wanted to switch this over to combine with uh, corner offset, we definitely could also. So, any questions, guys? 
Um, you know, Kevin, I've been I've been looking at the questions area. Uh, not so much in terms of everything that you're showing here tonight. Um, looks like looks like George is kind of running some super cool setup. Um, I, I was chatting with him throughout this this uh, presentation. Um, he's going to send in a, a picture of um, of his of his particular computer setup that he he's really happy with, I guess. So um, maybe we'll uh, take that picture and you know maybe feature it on our website somewhere. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. I told him he might even get a discount on his second seat of software if he <laughs> if, uh, you know if he agrees for us to use that or something. You know. But um, no, it it seems to it seems to be. Um, it seems to be pretty quiet in terms of questions here. For those of you guys who were kind of curious on my computer setup, let me just see. I think I do have a picture in here. Do we have some extra time to show the video of you crashing into the water on your uh, snowmobile? <laughs> I think a lot of the people have seen that already. but uh, Oh, that's right. You did play that, didn't you? Yeah. yeah for those of you who don't, don't know, look at, look at that. That's, oh, man. I want that. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, I have like not even half of that. <laughs> so for those of you guys that are wondering, um, I kind of use, you know, I got two systems kind of set up here. Um, obviously my desk is a little messy right here and setting up a, uh, a different computer for one of our account managers here. But um, over here I'm running a Dell uh, 7510 or Dell Precision 7510 um, with a docking station. So actually I have my docking station kind of set up underneath here and uh, so I don't even open up my, my laptop lid and running, I think this, this is a 30, 38 inch ultra wide curved monitor here. And then these are I think 32 inch 4K monitors right here. Um, so real nice setup here. Um, and for you guys that are curious on, on running three monitors here, um, what I'm doing for my third monitor is running a pluggable uh, display port adapter. Uh, just plugs into your USB port um, that allows you to get that third monitor in there. And seems like I'm always doing 10 bazillion things at a time. So um, that's one computer setup I have. And then what I'm actually running on tonight right now is this computer setup right here. And this is a Dell Precision 6800, basically the exact same setup, uh, running off a laptop, off of a docking station um, with three monitors and, uh, you know, external you know mouse and obviously I got the laptop lid closed and keyboard and and uh, the 3d connection mouse but uh, definitely uh, if you guys have computer questions send those over to us and can definitely uh, make any recommendations and we're not um, you know we're not you know partnered with anybody on computers um, we just kind of go out and test what what's out there um, if you actually talk to our headquarters team they all actually run HP computers uh, and seem to be having uh, even better luck using those so um, you know the sky's the limit on, on what you guys can use so yeah Ronnie was asking um, what why two systems Kevin two systems um, doing too much work at once I guess <laughs> <laughs> this uh, this was my original system over here um, that I start that solid cam uh, kind of started and with this one over here Dell wanted to test out some computers so I said well if you wanna I'll test your your guys' system and put it through its ringers and test its max capacities but I need I need I need a setup of that I can use on a daily basis so they hooked me up with some monitors and. Um, everything that I needed so yeah you know and the thing is too guys um, <laughs> you know Kevin not not to try to you know put you way too up on the on the pedestal but you know Kevin Kevin does so much for this company uh, he does all of these classes uh, you know never mind that I mean he he records all the videos uh, he does uh, he has he creates curriculum for uh, you know for these classes he does tech support. He does training videos. He does, um, uh, well, you know, I mean, how many trade shows have you been to, Kevin? I mean, you know, all that stuff. I mean, he just, he is, he's really being pulled in a thousand different directions. And, you know, I'm not surprised that, that he has two systems like that because <laughs> I'm sure that, 
you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty much sure that Kevin is sort of a cyborg. I don't think he sleeps, but, <laughs> you know. Sleep's uh, overrated. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. We, you know, what is what is our our uh, our, our, our Sean? My mute is our our, our excellent uh, COO of the company. He says the the time. What does he say? The time between midnight and and six a.m. is is always wasted. So yep. um, I think <laughs> I think Kevin takes full advantage of those times. So, um, but no, it's it's really um, it's it's really great to 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 see that and. It's just you know it's just Kevin's level of, of dedication to this to this product is, is what we're doing here tonight. So, and if anybody wants to see the video on uh, me uh, sinking a stone bill in the water that Brendan was talking about, uh, I have it right here. If anybody wants it, yeah. right I can just yeah. actually just copy it in. You guys won't this, see it on the you, YouTube channel, but I I have to be honest with you, Kevin. I when I saw this, I was terrified, man. I I couldn't I couldn't believe that this actually happened and you survived. <laughs> So, I'm just I'm just happy to be here. I'm happy that you're here. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I put the link in there if anybody doesn't want that. But um, you guys send those ideas over to me. Um, you know, if you guys have stuff coming up now next week, uh, we are going to be kind of doing a HSM wrap up. Um, kind of, I want more than anything. I kind of want you guys to ask me the questions, and we will show it live for you. I'll try to pull up a part that you're asking for. Um, now we did one of these a couple months ago, and basically you guys just type in, and it was a little slow at first for people who are a little shy asking questions, but now um, once it towards the end, it started flying off the handle. So definitely, um, you know, if you guys have questions with the HSM, um, you know, let me know right now. Or like I said, we are going to next week's class is just going to be kind of covering anything that you guys want to see done in uh, HSM or HSR. For that fact um, so it, like I said we're kind of doing a wrap-up session there and then we will move over into HSS and uh, kind of cover everything there so um, but thanks again guys for taking your Wednesday night and watching this um, I know a lot of you guys are, are repeats here um, got a couple of new guys in here but for those of you guys that are repeats I'm still working with go to webinar on how we can get this figured out so you guys don't have to register every time um, Rick, are you were you able to get registered this time without having any issues? I think it was Rick. I was having some issues. Yeah, you know, Kevin. Uh, truth be told, I I actually I'm having <laughs> issues having to re register every time too. So maybe we you and I can talk about that offline. Okay. Yep. Um. But yeah, it looks like Rick was able to re-register without a problem. Okay. Perfect. Uh, George lost his power. So, uh, George, just real quick, if you want to type something in, um, I think we talked about everything, um, but if there's something that you think we missed, uh, just feel free to let us know. We can hang out for another minute or two and, and you know, answer whatever questions you might have. Uh, George, did you see the computer setup that we were just talking about? I, th I think that's what, I think that's where maybe it left off, Kevin. Um, and then just right after that, uh, Ronnie had asked about why the two systems. M maybe can you just kind of, you know just kind of do a little bit of a wrap up on that, sure. Kevin? Why you have got the two different ones? Yeah, I'll pull the picture back up so you can see it here. Oh yeah, it's got to find it here. Too many pictures of kids. You got a lot of kids, man. You got a lot of you got a lot of toys for the kids too. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> See where is it here? It's got to be somewhere. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, George was was asking about the uh, the system setup that you have, Kevin. Um, all right, am I missing it here, Brendan? <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, the the one that you brought up uh, oh, previously. Yep. So there you go, George. There, there's, uh, there's, there's the. That's uh, like, that is like the ultimate office. That is, that is the, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, do you have actually? It's so funny. You know what I picture in this room? Do you have one of those like Star Wars chairs that kind of like you know, like hydraulically floats from one <laughs> yeah. center to the next one? I wish. It's a trap. It's a trap. You know, no. like I can almost see that. 
there, there's just the uh, Red Bull fridge uh, sitting off to the side to uh, to work those late hours. <laughs> but no, and George, what we're talking about is I got uh, two different systems here. This is a Dell 7510 uh, laptop that's actually hooked up to a docking station, um, running external monitors, and then this system over here is actually the one that we do the night class on is um, a Dell Precision 6800 um, running basically the exact same setup on a docking station with external monitors. Um, the 7510 is a much faster system, uh, is much newer, but unfortunately, since I have such a large monitor, it kind of comes for you guys viewing it. That's, I don't know if you, some of you guys are here for the very first night class, but uh, kind of came up a little small for you guys to, to see, so we had to kind of resort back to the uh, the older monitors here using, I think these are 28 inch monitors over on the right, but um, yeah. Well, all I can tell you, Kevin, is I'm jealous. I mean, I, I don't have that kind of setup. I only have the, I don't have the dual monitors myself, so I guess I'm, I guess I have to upgrade, or at least I, maybe I'm just not that important. I don't know. <laughs> you can never have enough monitors. That's, I guess not. I mean, I'm I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna call Sean tomorrow and you know tell him that you you said you call <laughs> Sean you <laughs> and you need you need six more monitors. So. Yeah. You can be. He'll probably tell you only if you get six more times uh, proficiency. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, all right, guys. Like I said, thanks again for uh, taking the time and uh, join the night class tonight. And uh, like I said, any of those ideas, send over to me. Um, we'll get those added in. And like I said, if you guys have any HSM questions, um, next week is gonna be the, the week to ask away. I'm basically gonna open up the floodgates for you guys. And you guys just tell me what you guys wanna see, what you guys wanna, you know, what we didn't cover or maybe go in more detail over and uh, get that all fixed up for you guys. So, um, Brendan, got anything else? Before we wrap it up here, uh, you know, not too much. I'll, the only thing I just want to say, uh, obviously, guys, uh, if there's anything you need from us, please feel free to give us a call. Uh, you know, again, you, you guys all know how great the you know the support staff is. Um, always here for you guys. Answer any question. Uh, if you have a question on you know a certain feature of the software, you know, just just give us a buzz. You know, everybody's here to help. So. Um, you know, that's pretty much it. So, you know, the only other thing I just want to say is, is thanks again for your time. I know it's very, you know, difficult to get away sometimes. And, uh, you know, just again, you know, thanks so much for, for hanging out with us a little bit later on in the evening. So absolutely, guys. Uh, I guess that's about it. So yeah, Kevin, thanks so much. Yeah, Appreciate absolutely, it. Absolutely, guys. And uh, this video will be uploaded to YouTube, um, you know, early a.m and uh, you guys can rewatch it. But like Brendan said, any questions, pop-up concerns, definitely shoot me an email right away and uh, get those addressed right away for you guys. But all right, guys, have a wonderful night, and we'll look forward to seeing you guys next week. Take care, guys. See you guys. Bye-bye.